back to doing another uh, Creative Courage chat. And I'm here with Max Pressneil. He was recommended by Tom Dowling uh, in, in a previous video, if you've seen it before. And, and he's going to talk about art in general in the fine arts community. And uh, can you introduce yourself and tell everybody what it is that you do? Sure. Okay. So I'm Max Presnell. Um, I'm, art, I'm a painter, an artist, and uh, I'm the director and head curator for the Torrance Art Museum, which is a small contemporary art museum in Los Angeles County. Um, I also curate independently of the museum, uh, and I'm one of the. I was a founder and co-runner of a, a space in downtown Los Angeles right now called Durden and Ray, which is an artist-run um, collaborative group, gallery, come whatever we decide to, to do with it at any given time. Um, and I organize quite a lot of uh, international exchanges uh, between alternative spaces, that kind of thing. It's the main focus of what I do outside of the museum. Um, in terms of the museum, um, yeah, we're really, really interested in more in emerging art artists, um, new directions, um, curatorial methodologies that might be interesting. Um, you know, we're really, we're really kind of trying to uh, redefine ourselves um, as an art museum, more in keeping perhaps with the Kunsthaler idea in some ways. Um, so we have a far more, we're far less traditional as a museum space than many might be. So, so your art, is, there, is that behind you? Is that some of your artwork? No, no, that's Claudia Parducci, who's a friend. I don't hang oh. my own artwork. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I, a lot of young artists, I talk to a lot of young artists. I know that there are a lot of young artists that, that watch these videos. Um, can we start off with you and your work and, and maybe what, um, you know, it's hard to say sometimes if you're influenced or what your influences are or, or, or how you approach it. Um, can you share a little bit about your work? Yeah, I make, uh, they tend to be large scale abstract paintings that have, um, they're brightly colored. Um, they tend to um, have gestural marks in there, but they also have reference points to subcultures, as it were. Um, and those subcultures can be taken from uh, mod culture, which is a particularly English thing, um, between, from skateboarding culture um, and from um, MC, motorcycle club. Um, life because I'm a member of a uh, one percenter MC, and uh, so there's elements, uh, images, and reference points which um, connect into those areas. Um, and the idea is to explore um, how one can use painting to uh, talk about what it means to be alive in the world, having uh, ideas about uh, community, uh, responsibility, obligation. Um, you know, all these aspects that make up your relationships in the art world, in MC world, in, uh, in general uh, relationships. Um, certainly it's to do, it's partly to do with uh, trying to define uh, some kind of idea of masculinity in a time when um, I think it's, it's, it's a difficult question, um, particularly if one is in the art world where, you know, um, if I give an example, um, I personally have found that the MC world is far more sensitive than one would think. Um, and, and, and that their definition of um, masculinity is far more nuanced than one would think. And so there's that kind of thing between expectations and realities and, 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 and reverse. What does it mean to be an artist in the world? What does it mean to talk about mortality and presence and uh, a kind of um, existential take on, on, on living today? one without God. Um, you know, there's some of those kind of questions that the work tries to deal with. So you're, you have a well-established path you're taking with your artwork. And um, it, I talk about moments of discovery, you know, in our lives when, when things happen to us that put us on a path. Mm -hmm. So what was, what is it, is there, is that a definable thing for you that when you discovered that you wanted to go on this path and, and what okay. is it that happened? Sure, I think, I mean, it's, the, it's those light bulb moments that one goes through in your, in your life. And I think that they, you know, those, those moments happen to everyone. The difference is recognizing it as such, number one, but more importantly is doing something about it. Um, I, you know, I come from a very working class um, background and uh, one that had no experience of the arts, but myself and some of my brothers like drawing. And uh, it, there was a, a few, um, you know, getting in trouble and that kind of thing as a kid. 
Um, and there were some moments that, uh, you know, discovering that, you know, okay, so there was a, there's, a, there's a book. Um, there it is. There it is. <laughs> the concise history of modern painting. Okay. And I, was, you know, I was a troublesome youth. Uh -huh. and, uh, somebody said, you should read this. And, uh, and I started reading it. And, uh, and it was the first moment when I, re I was actually reading about cubism. Mm -hmm. And I realized, hold on, there's this whole thing, there's this whole set of ideas in the world um, that are really interesting. And that the painting has these layers of depths um, that can start talking about really big picture things. You know, like what's the meaning of life and how do we perceive and how does the mind work? And what's the difference between how the eye functions and the mind works? And, all these kind of things, and it and it really was that that book made me hungry um, for for knowing more about art and giving me uh, it gave me uh, a, that one space that allowed me to combine um, that my intellectual needs as a kind of intellectually malnourished uh, street kid um, through this idea of what I what, you know, art and making things which I really liked doing. I, I, I didn't think there was a world for it. I just liked doing it. A drawing and all this kind of thing and it kind of it gave me a path and and the good thing about these kind of paths is they don't end you know artists don't retire we die right uh, you know, and and the uh you know once you're kind of on that that route that journey um the great thing about it in so many ways is it's forever giving of new ideas new things to think about new approaches and you know there's been there's been many many moments um you know, I walked into the Tate once and there's an Albert Ir Irwin painting um, up on the wall and it really smacked me around the head. And that's happened to me with a lot of artworks in the past. Um, you know, there's also been those, those moments when you're kind of going off the rails a bit and friends step in and say, hey, pay attention. Um, right. you know, there's been a fair number of those. So, so that, that's interesting to me. And I think that's something that's really relevant and and. and it, it's such a shame, I think, those moments when, like you said, you got smacked in the head when you saw a piece of artwork because you allowed yourself to. Sure. There was something about it that sparked something inside you that you allowed yourself to feel about it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's something that I think is, is missed so much uh, is that people feel these kinds of things all the time, but they're not willing to step into the warm water Absolutely. of that feeling, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's really important. I think young people need to hear that, that you literally, those are the moments that change your life. Those are the moments that put you on these paths and to, you have to experience them, right? I think that the key of it is, and it was one of the early lessons of trying to be an artist, which was uh, over 24 hours a day somewhere. And you don't necessarily have to pay to something. You have to be open. And if you see something, your, and your brain starts ticking away with it for some, and you don't know what the reason is or whatever, is as an artist, you learn to pay attention to it. And they're, they're often the, the le true learning moments because there might be, it might be something like pushing you outside of your comfort, you know, your boundaries about what art might be or what to look at. Um, and you need to be really open to that sensation because at first it might not come. There's right. something niggling at you. You don't know what it is, but, but you keep thinking about it. Um, and, and I think that the, 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 you know, you can, you basically train yourself to pay attention to that and yeah. let it, take it cycle, think about it, not think about it, but let it go through and your brain will sort this out. Um, you just have to be open to listening to it when it comes back to you and says that pay attention, you're missing that. You know, uh, I'm sure it's the same for anybody. You know, if, if you're an inventor, you know, there's something wrong. I can, I don't know what it is. And then click, hold on a minute. What that needs is. And, you know, to, to discover a new way of doing it, a, a better, more efficient way of doing it, whatever it might be, because your brain's looking for and open to these kind of uh, opportunities in the world, as it were. Right. Yeah, I went to, I remember it, for what you're saying kind of reminds me of when I went to uh, New York City and it was uh, right when the memorial opened up after 9-11. And we're walking around the memorial. It felt like you were walking through a graveyard or something, you know, when you're walking through that area. And there was, a, you know, and, and you're experiencing everything. And, and uh, you know, it's very, you know, obviously, I, I'm of the age when we, I experienced it very deeply. You know, my, mo my daughter, it's a story to her. But um, while I was walking, I went around the corner and then there was a fire engine. And the fire engine 
half of it was demolished. It looked like it had been gnawed on by a giant or something. And the front end was, couldn't be more pristine and polished and perfect and beautiful. And for some reason, out of everything that was there, the side of that engine hit me so hard that I stopped in my tracks. And I started weeping because of the polished beauty of the front of the engine in comparison to the rest of it and how the polished beauty of the engine showed the discipline that they had in the station working hard to keep this equipment so strong you know to, to keep it shiny and perfect and then seeing the results of of the work that they were there to to fight and seeing that there was this 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 thing about it and it hit me very, very hard for some reason. It's one thing I really remember more than anything. So I allowed myself to experience it. I just stood there and just took it in until the feeling passed over me. And I remember my daughter awkwardly standing next to me. <laughs> and, and I'm watching people pass by. And I'm not saying I judge them, but I was wondering, are you really getting what, his, what, what is here, what we're seeing? Are, you really, are we all seeing these things that are happening? Because I feel like it's, a, it's, it's missed opportunities for so many of us. And, and, uh, and I know I'll keep going back to that. But, but anyway. Otherwise, you, know, you, see, this, you yeah. see this kind of thing where we, get, we, we very easily get stuck into these kind of ruts of just doing things. And it's not necessarily it doesn't feel bad. Right. Like, this is what I do. And, and it's like when you, know, you take the same route to work all the time, you stop seeing anything on the way. Um, and I, you know, it's how do you put in place mechanisms to trigger seeing it again? You know, so you're you're learning, you're seeing something, you're discovering something. Wouldn't you say galleries and museums in general are designed to almost walk people through that process? Absolutely. I mean, my job once we've decided what the theme is and we've shortlisted some artists, and then we contact them or their galleries or other museums to borrow. We do all this stuff when it when all that stuff arrives in the museum space and we're setting up where we want everything to go then it's a it, it's extremely conscious uh process of okay this will lead you to this this you'll see across the room and it'll, this will get your eye noting the similarities and because it'll just catch it and look back and, and you do this kind and people will walk this way because they always do i mean it's, they're kind of predictable in most in many cases about how they'll maneuver around the space and of mm. course you can manipulate that to some degree you put the sculpture there so that they're forced to go closer to the painting up against the wall those kind of decisions are part and parcel of the you know the installation uh, process and a really important part because you're trying you're deliberately trying to trigger these um, these kind of uh, experiences and you have to have them each and every one of them, the ult you know, ultimate you can possibly make that experience when you get them in front of it. So if it's a small work, how do you get people to go up close to it? You know, how do you make sure if it's a larger one that you've made the space so people can stand back from it, that you're inviting people to go this way and see something from the back, you know, a sculpture from the back. I mean, all those things are important to do because you're trying to have given them that, that experience, you know. Um, it, Luckily, working in the art world, it, I think most people that walk into a museum space are looking for a certain kind of experience anyway. So, you, you know, your job's half done because they walk through the door. Right. Because some spaces have that, you know, you know you, there's like for me, um, I, I'm a, a soccer fan, you know, football. Um, they already have, going into a stadium to watch a game, already has certain aspects about it, knowing it's going to be a certain kind of experience, that I know I'm going to go, you know, engage with this kind of really emotional roller coaster by going in there. Yeah, and sadly, I'm, very, I'm very familiar with that feeling. My family is from Uruguay, so soccer is a real. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know that much. And, I do. Uh, I know. <laughs> and 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 I, and I'm I'm willing to take the criticism about Suarez. I'm I'm all up for it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> It's a privilege to be bitten by that man. Um, but anyway, <laughs> that's a whole other topic. But you see it right there, sports, I think, is interesting. an interesting thing. The experience that people feel through the watching of sports is a complex thing as well. I mean, there's a lot of pieces to it. There's the athleticism. There is the loyalty to your team. There's the love of, of just the atmosphere and of particular players and their efforts and, and it's a story. You're watching a story and le like just played out before you, and you have no idea how it's going to end. And it, and it's the anticipation, <laughs> the beauty of of 
of a goalie and their ability to do something as good as a goal, but yet get no credit with a point. <laughs> I keep telling people, you don't, you know, it's low scoring, but a good save is as good as a good score. You just don't see it on the scoreboard. <laughs> you know, the funny, because I was thinking about that, but one of my brothers was a goalkeeper, and uh, it's an incredibly uh, brave position, because it, like you said, there's, there's rarely that much of a plus to it. It's only mm -hmm. negatives if you let something in, and if you right. say something, you've kind of done your job. Um, but one of the things that were, I, I always thought that they were like, um, the goalkeepers like the drummer in a band. Mm -hmm. You know, slightly mad position. You have to be slightly off your head. <laughs> yes, they, they, they do. Back. And you sit at the back and just like yeah. crazy people at the back. Speaking of that, were you a musician or I, I imagine you were influenced by music because I think at your formative yeah. age, there were some pretty amazing things happening. You know, the... I've been, um, I've been, I've, I've, I sang in a band years ago. We were crap, terrible. Yeah, uh, so did I. And we were crap <laughs> too. <laughs> What's the crap band out there? Um, you know, and I've, I've been very, very influenced by music mm -hmm. since I was very, very young. It's the first, the first things I can remember as a child were, were all music based. Um, it, it creeps into everything and I listen to music all the time, but I have absolutely no talent with any musical instrument. I have no okay. talent whatsoever. My wife can play like half a dozen instruments, not very well because she doesn't practice, but she can, you know, and I just... You know, clink, 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 and it's it's all terrible. So I, yeah. I stay away from it. But I think that the uh, the uh, it, it, you know it's one of those things. You know, all, I, I've I've heard this, and I can't, and I I know a lot of you know professional musicians um, just because I was always interested, and in, so going and seeing them, and and you know, art world and the music world are often very closely entwined. Mm -hmm. In England, anyway, a lot of bands come out of art schools. Of course, I went to art school, um, and. That one, the thing that I'd read as a cliche, and I think is true, is all musicians want to be artists and all artists want to be musicians. I think you know, that's probably true, yeah. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the artists want the kind of public recognition and the sex, drugs and rock and roll, and the, and the and musicians want the seriousness of, you know, of their pursuit, you know, to be taken seriously. Yeah, and that leads to kind of also an interesting thing, because Tom Bott brought up something interesting in our talk in regards to how, how, how in terms of how you appreciate music um and there's similarities in how you appreciate that with the art world except that there's a level of convenience in listening to music is what i was thinking is that you could be cooking dinner and have a uh, some and appreciate music because it's going through your ear yeah. but visual art requires you to pause everything sure. and absorb something visually and i think that people are so impatient and people are so you know busy and um, that a lot of times that might influence whether they give themselves the chance to be interrupted mm -hmm. by the visual arts. Yeah. It, it, so, so that's why, that's why I, I was kind of thinking that people just don't understand how to appreciate art, and, and, but would very much appreciate it if, if they gave themselves the opportunity to do so. Because I could, I've been moved emotionally by paintings I've seen, by poems I've heard and read, you know, and and because you allow yourself to feel those things, and and to and to feel artwork is is the I'm really intrigued. I'm going to dive deep into your work because I'm really intrigued about the masculinity thing because I think it needs to be redefined. I think it needs to. Uh, do you listen to? The, the, I keep going back and I apologize. I'm, I, I, have, I have a very short attention fan. I jump around a lot, but, but uh, you were talking about music. Have you heard, you, do you, you know the band, The Idols? No, I don't think so. You should I listen to them, really, Idols. Well, mostly, oh, it depends what I'm doing, but I, um, I listen to a lot of like late 60s soul music. Oh, okay. And, and I like, they're more of a punk. They're more of a punk rock band, but they. I, I, I like I like punk, but it tends to be I'm still stuck in the seventies with punk. That's why you might like them because they they have the same heart as as they did back then. And one of the topics they tap into is is toxic masculinity and and what it does. And it's really interesting because of the 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 music and the message they clash, and which makes it interesting. Yeah, no pun intended. By you know, saying there's, there's a couple of things that you've just mentioned, which I, I think are fairly uh, important aspects of, of how to look and how to listen. Um, and um, I can give you an analogy. Um, when I first heard Radiohead, hmm. I was like, nah. <laughs> so I finished listening to it, 
And the first thing I did about five minutes later was go back and put it back on again. Because I was like, nah, but, but, but there's something like, listen, listen, listen. And I went back and I put it on a third time. And um, a curator friend of mine, Carl Berg, said to me years ago um, that you should always, whenever you're looking at art for the first time and you're like, nah, yeah, don't like it. And you walk away. If you're still thinking about it 10 minutes later, you need to think about why. And that might mean going back. Um, and, and looking again, because what might be happening here is it's expanding you and, right. and you know, your limitations. And, and in doing that, I think, uh, because it's really easy to look at a, a nice painting and go, oh, that's lovely, I really love it, great. And then two weeks later, you don't even remember you saw it. Infatuation is easy, love is hard. Right, yeah. And I think to, to, to fall in love really with mute, certain musics, music types and, and, and bands or whatever, and to fall in love with art and, and, and different art works individually, it often is this disruptive thing, which has opened you up and, and forced you to relook and forced you to re-listen and causes some kind of change in you. And, and that's when I think you can fall in love with you know, things in the world is to, when it changes you on the inside. Yes, um, yes. And, and good band, you know, the, my favorite bands, uh, often the ones that made me go, what, what? You know, rather than easy listening. Um, and, and I do think there's, um, to do that well, something needs, I, this is how I describe it in my head. I don't know if this helps any, but I always describe it as bite. When I'm looking at artworks, it has to have something that grabs, you know, yeah. keeps his teeth in there and isn't going to let go. You know, and good music does that to me. It's like, you know, I, I put on one record now, I have to listen to 30 because it's just so great. See, you're tapping into something because you can't see it, but I got goosebumps from listening to what you just said because <laughs> I, I can so relate to what you're talking about. Uh, you know, when I'm working, because I, I delve into all sorts of different writing and painting and, and music and all those different kinds. Of, I del I'm like a general specialist. I'm not great at anything, but I do a lot of things. But I do find that when I'm working, I know that I'm seriously working because I perspire. It doesn't matter what the temperature is in the room. It doesn't matter. It could sure. be freezing cold, but I'll be perspiring because there's something going on in my body, you know, where I'm feeling something and I know I'm in the zone or I'm, and I'm connected. And it's funny because um, I'm not a religious person, but I do, I do find that, that if there is a God, you're never closer to him than when you're working on something important. You know, you, you know, when you're working and you're using all these things, tools that you've been given that we don't understand, you know, that, that, that's, that's a big part for me is that we don't understand how this gray thing between our ears works. Nobody does yet. It's, yeah. it's so complex, but you don't need to understand it. You need to just use it as much as possible because in the using, you'll eventually understand it. And I think that when you see artwork, sometimes like you were saying, the, the bite that happens to you or the, the thing that you feel is emotional is something in here. Your mind is separated from that. So logically, you don't understand what it is. And you make a choice on whether you're going to put the energy into continuing into that or just if it doesn't make sense, it might not be worthwhile. And, and so you have to balance between those two. There's, you know, the, the same as the unconscious, the subconscious and the conscious mind. We don't control our subconscious mind. Yet it's always on and it's always there and it's always feeding us data. And our yeah. conscious mind, sometimes the, the data we're getting doesn't make any sense. That's Before what I was I, earlier yeah. when I said about you, yeah. you allow this part of your mind to 24 hours a day. Yes. If the subconscious is working, it's and always I working. Learn to trust it. You know, I learned, you know you, you got to learn to trust it to that there was something you vaguely saw and it, it keeps something's turning around and then 24 hours later, a week later, ah. That's right, yeah. Now I get it. I, I like to, when, young, I talk, when I talk to young people, like students about this, art students or, or, or people about this, I always say, you know, think about when you're dreaming, you know. You're dreaming, there's a story in your head that you're having when you're dreaming. And, and you are the director, the actor, the, the writer, the you, the, the, you cinematographer. You created the plot and you put the monster under the bed. So how come you're surprised when you see the monster? You're the one who put it there. But sure. you, when you see it, you're surprised and you're shocked because it's there. Who put the monster into the bed if it wasn't you? This is the complexity of your mind. And I think this is what the subconscious does. It doesn't let you in on anything. 
It doesn't make anything obvious. It feeds you things that are abstract on purpose, and your, your job is to absorb it and take it. So in, technically, in some ways, we're always experiencing art and from that perspective. It's mm -hmm. our, our perspective of looking at things in general and then, and then taking them. I don't know. I'm just, I'm all I, over the place. I think you're right. But, uh, you know, it, the, the experience of, because you said something just now, which is in the zone. And, you, and you know, sports people use that, that, that kind of uh, that phrase all the time. Yeah. When, when I'm in the zone, as it were, in the studio, like time disappears. There's just music, right. if I'm listening to music, and like the focus of what I'm doing. And that it is so intuitive a set of, you know, I can stand back and go, yeah, you know, this needs to go there and this needs to go there. And a lot of that's compositional stuff that you learn to do right. And, but so much of it's just feeling it right because you trust that you're, you've put in enough time and effort to know when that's something that's going to work. But you can't trust yourself just to respond. Um, but that, 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 that periods of time, like I, I often will be in the studio for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours you know, until somebody comes and drags me up because you've lost all sense of time, energy. I don't even get tired. Uh, you know, I'm just in there painting, 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 applying stuff. And, and, and it really is this kind of weird thing because it is so, uh, so much of it is from the unconscious. So much of it is um, you know, kind of bubbling away without an explanation. But you spend the day, even though, you know, in this zone, going in backwards and forwards between these two things where you're kind of, you do something, intuitively you step back and say how's it working and then mm -hmm. that's the conscious mind creating order for it and then you delve back in and something else happens. and it's uh, for me even though i lose track of all sense of time etc it's this constant shifting between the kind of un the subconscious and the conscious mind going between this this you know the, the, the actual painting part of it is you know i could i could I'm, I'm, it's like a zombie because you're just letting yourself do it right and then the conscious mind steps back and says yeah, you need to change that, or you know, that's not right. That's the wrong color, you know. That is so hard, though. It is so hard to get there. Well, you know, so I, that's why I think it. Because I used to teach at universities, I teach art and painting um, years ago, and uh, it's it was it's always really hard to get to to students to understand that you know you, you're there to break all your own rules, to force these things that you don't know. Um, and, but one of the things you, they need to learn is to stop. Stop trying to illustrate a thought with art. That's not what your job is. You can intellectualize it before and afterwards, but when you're actually making it, who knows what's going to happen? You know, it, it, this isn't an illustration. This is a painting, and they are not the same things. And to get to that understanding is that, you know, illustration, you know what it's going to be. You plan it. You kind of get, go through the process of making it. You use your technical skills and your judgment. There's, no, there's not much else going on in that. As a fine artist, you, I, I, abstract painter, there's no rule book. There's n I have no clue what that painting is going to be like when I start. I just know that I need to start with, I fancy trying this now, and I want to have a go at that, and I want to learn by experiment this. Um, and then you go that, that but you, you know, students, the hardest thing I think they, they, they ever need to learn at art school, because people, well, I went to art school and I left because they just, there was no, there was no like, they didn't teach me anything. You, if you leave art school because you think that, it's because you were expecting to be treated like a child and be told how to make art when the, 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 what they're there for is to allow you to expand your mind, experiment, take risks and chances, and to allow your brain to, and mind to grow. Right. Um, you know, and you get a lot, I've heard, I hear a lot of people say, well, I'm artist and I left because, you left because you didn't understand what art school's about and for. It is work. It is work. It's a lot of work. It's a, it's a lot, lot of work. commitment too. Yeah. Uh, this isn't something you step in and out of. Um, but yeah, the main thing that you're kind of there to learn is, you know, you take classes on this, that, and the other. But the main thing that they teach you there is how to think creatively, how to let your mind grow, to, to try and uh, get out of the boundaries you think you know. Right. right. I uh, often, well, not often, but I mean, I did already tell this short story, but I think it's relevant to what you were saying. And my niece called me one time. She's a, She's an artist, she's a young artist, and when she was taking art class in school, she was frustrated with the teacher because the teacher was making her paint things she didn't think were that fun, like life drawings and stuff like that. <laughs> and she was like, and, and he didn't appreciate anything that I did, and he thinks he's always criticizing me. I said, well, Uncle Alex, I think I don't want to do art anymore, and I don't think I want to do it. And I said, okay, go ahead and quit, who cares? 
you're, you're just a kid. You haven't even sold any artwork. You're not really, you know, doing anything anyway. You're just going to be one of those people that's going to work in a retail store who's an amazing artist because you're always going to be an artist because it's already decided. It's not yeah. like it, you're already amazing, but now you'll just work whatever job you want to do. You'll be like Elvis Presley who's working as a gas station attendant, but he picks up a guitar. He can play an amazing song and then he puts it down and he goes back to the car and works on it again. Yeah. So, you know, th that's it. So go ahead and quit. I don't care. And so <laughs> she goes, and then she goes, I don't like talking about this with you, Uncle Alex. And and now she's a working artist. She's fantastic. She's a better artist than I'll ever be. She's she actually took Tom's class too a little bit, and um, she she she's it's ridiculous how good she is. But she just needed to process this stuff. But you're right. They're just wanting to be treated like children. They're wanting they're wanting to 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 for everything to be just handed over to them. When the journey is is yours and your own, and you need to go on on your, on your own and discover these things on your own. It takes but the same as it does, I'm sure, for actors and the same definitely for musicians is mm. you need to want it enough to get you through all the crap that you're going to go through for years in the beginning. Most artists, because most of them don't come out and become art stars. It's something you have to build over years, your resume, doing exhibitions, people get to know what you're doing, you know, bigger shows, you know, moving up the ladder, uh, your sales prices go up for years. You know, I remember the first, I, I'm still in contact with the guy who bought my very, very first painting. That's mm -hmm. how important a moment it, you know, it kind of was. Right. This right. is like 30, 35 years ago, whatever it is now. Um, but, you know, it, 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 the wheat from the chaff is, uh, you know, it, it's sorted very, very, very strongly. We lose a good, any, uh, any, you know, the amount of people go and do an art degree, we lose maybe 90% of those relatively yeah. quickly right. um you know it, it really you know most of them don't manage to get through the other side and even the one yeah, it takes dedication like anything if you if you need to want it enough so that leads to i we I, we've got about 10 minutes or or so uh i try to go take do these about 45 minutes or so and i wanted to ask you then about that um i think that that uh you're right and i think that there's so many people give up on their art careers why do they do that? Is, is it because of the society not valuing art the way it should? Is, is it have, does it have to do with them or their, what, what is it in your view? They want money immediately. I mm -hmm. mean, I, you know, my, I recognized early on in wanting to do it enough that um, I'm willing to have a shitty level of um, income to be able to do what I love. And it, it fulfilled me intellectually in ways that and I I I, I don't want to um, be dramatic with it, but at the same time I don't want to underplay uh, how important it was. Quality of life is uh, this pursuit of knowledge through this uh, this act, and uh, you know I if I didn't have something that meant that much to me, I would just been a, a gangster. Why not? Money, you know, easy, you know, not not an easy life, but hell, why not? Um, right. But money, I know this is ridiculous, but I made a conscious choice that I, I will put up with the poverty to be able to do this thing. Um, and I think most people can't do that, um, right. uh, unfortunately. Um, I think a lot of people get family pressure um, when, when they need to learn to be adults in the world and not, you're not all, you shouldn't run through life being your parent's child. You know, I, you know, we're old enough, maybe that makes sense. You know, my, my parents are great, but... And that, you know, in that sense, you are always their child, but you don't, I don't live and make my decisions based on what they want. Right. And I think a lot of people do, and they go through their life doing that. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's a big influence. I think the, the money side's huge for most people. There's also, you know, it, it, art attracts people often who are very sensitive to certain things and getting um, and, and having very little positive support um, causes a lot of people to drop out because you know, why am I doing this? No, nothing's coming along. No shows are coming in. Who cares what I'm doing? You know, there's a certain amount of, um, um, you know, I don't know, tenacity needed to keep going through all of that. Um, and also you need, you know, because people can get in these, these uh, you know, ruts about what they're making. You know, you, you need to have the kind of mind that will allow the intuitive to come in. But you also have to have the mind that can step back and be, hyper hyper critical and not see that as you know putting yourself down it's important to be able to be hyper critical so that you can get better constantly so that you're not stuck I, I know plenty of people who've got minor art careers 
um, really nice people, lovely, never going to have a bigger career because they cannot do that one thing, which is step back, be hypercritical of what they're doing and see where it needs to change because they, they have an ego invested in being this small defined up person um, with their work. I'm the guy that does this. Um, yeah, I'm comfortable with it. Um, and because I'm comfortable, I know I can slowly change as I develop. I, I don't need to be comfortable in the world. Right. We need to be challenged in the world. Right. And, and, and people I know that are good at this challenge themselves. Make, you know, there, there's no point in being complacent. Every day should teach you something in the studio. Um, you know, if, you, if you're going in there and it looks too easy, mess it up. Find the hardest route through. You know, and that's, it's just an approach towards uh, that. I think it, and I think it was really, really difficult for, uh, for a lot of people, you know. Um, you know, it, it's the equivalent of you know, being in a room with 30 people saying one thing and you think they're wrong and standing up and saying so. It's right. a difficult thing to do for a lot of people. Um, that, is, that is a commonality. That's why the book is called Creative Courage, right? Sure. It's because it requires courage to to do this thing i, I always kind of tell you know and i i i my i make my living at, with commercial art you know with i own a marketing firm and, I, and i'm the mm -hmm. creative director i you know i dabble in all sorts of things but when i talk to young artists i tell them that your job is to suffer <laughs> <laughs> your job is kind of because, because it's 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 although you're chasing something you love it's in the chase rather than the reaching of the thing oh yeah, yeah. and 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 that is sometimes difficult for people, because the the unless you appreciate the voyage, sure. there is there is no destination. That's sure. what they don't understand sometimes. I don't know how many artists I've had to talk had that discussion with when they're like, if I could only get this right, there isn't. There's no such thing. That's why whatever no. you do, you think that's the best painting I ever did. You're gonna make another one. You're always you're always settling. You're always settling. Yeah. I, I, I even I even shocked this. The, the recently I had a conversation with with an artist, and I said to her, I said, "Your art has zero value. You the value is in that you're able to make it. But when you're done, you need to move on and make another piece of art. Now other people will see value in your work, and it's there. There that's great. But you should just stop it. It's gone. It's it's done. You did your work. Now move on to the next thing, and move on to the next thing." Absolutely, so agree with this. It, the, the, it's absolutely about the making of it. It's the gallery's job to worry about the object that comes right, out. It's right, right. You're done with that. You know, getting all you know, and those artists to get all like, oh, but I have to. No, it's, it was an experiment. It's oh, not this an artifact. Yeah, it's <laughs> an artifact. No, absolutely. It is absolutely an artifact of a process. That's all. Yeah, exactly. It's the result of, of a whole process that, that's really powerful. And, and, yeah. I've, 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 tried to describe it in exactly those terms so many times because yeah don't think of it as an artwork with the capital a it's an artifact because the importance lied lies and and, and does lay within the, that those moments of making um the rest of it that's that, you know that's uh, that's that's the commercial art world that isn't your art world it isn't you and your peers looking at work making work discussing work that's for those guys over there to work out let them figure that out and, and don't get too and never get too tied up with them right. and otherwise you'll end up just making stuff for them sure. and they're only asking for stuff because somebody on the other side there has enough money to give that to them in exchange and that otherwise then you're, you're back to just you know you, you're just a, a decorator by that point well i'll tell you um i guarantee just from listening to you uh you make sense to me my friend so uh <laughs> i think uh, I like I like the words that you're saying. I think they're important, and I and I'm going to make sure and encourage uh, young artists I know to listen to this chat and learn a little bit from you. Um, I think that uh, I'm sure your students have learned a lot from you. Um, I, you have a long time ago now, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. I well, back in the day, but you know, it's funny because I think it's important to hear things like this, and I think that people need to listen to other people talk about their love of what they do. I mean, I I. I am a success in in what i do because of listening to people like you like tom and allowing them to inspire me and influence me and tell me give me permission to to do the work that i want to do sure. and I, that's why i think these 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 things are important to put out there and um so i'm going to go ahead and and um do you, what can you give some information about where people can see your work and and, um, and learn a little bit more about you 
um, on, on my website is maxpresneal.com. My Instagram is maxpresneal. Um, mm. It's M A X P R E S N E I L L. Because people often spell it you know, E and I the wrong way around or just one L. Um, and the Torrance Art Museum has its own website. And Durden and Ray has its own website. Um, so things, uh, all the kind of active, the most immediate activities I get up to. Uh, you can have a look there, um, you know, and, and check it out. I'm really glad that you know, you you are kind enough to invite me to uh, have this chat with you. Oh, I appreciate it. I, I want to have as many as possible, and and I might reach out to you again because I think we had we have we could probably go another hour on th talking about things. Easy, <laughs> yeah, easily. And and I do think it's important topic. We didn't delve into what's going on right now with the virus and everything, but I do think it's making an impact, but in uh, in good ways. It's too in the sense that it's forcing us to now, sh just like art does, it shifts our perspective of reality. And, and now we're in this position and everybody's kind of experiencing life differently now. Yeah, and I, and values and, and so right. for, um, in, a, in a kind of deeper sense, not just a commercial one, but of opportunities in the world mm -hmm. um, that these kind of hardships and difficulties can bring. You know, yeah. where, where can we look to improve? Where can we look to? find ways for us to negotiate ourselves in the world better. Well, we'll connect after this and, and keep in touch. And, and I, I definitely would love to have you back to talk. And um, I'm gonna do the uh, thing that I've been told by my staff that I need to do. Um, so if you like this talk, please like and subscribe to the show here on YouTube. I've got a podcast also that I'm turning these, these, these videos into podcasts that are available on Spotify and everything. So look up Creative Courage Chats, and you'll find you'll find it. Subscribe and do all that fun stuff. I don't know, whatever. But anyway, these are gonna. I have I have a lot of these, and I'm gonna be keep, I'm gonna keep doing these as much as possible. So thanks a lot for making the time, Max. I really appreciate it. And uh, until next time, I'll see you again. All right.